Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, and you are going to need it. The Yagni Principle. Don't build something today that you assume you'll need in the future. But hang on, there's some nuance there, because you also don't want to handcuff yourself. So I think there's two ways that people really think about Yagni. The first is related to features of, we're developing something right now that's needed, and then we assume that we're going to need something in a year's time from now, or six months, that's a closely related feature, and that's where Yagni comes in, of maybe you actually won't. The other side is more technical, which I think a lot of developers steer in when they're thinking about their code of, okay, I have, I'm have, i developing something right now, I'm implementing something, but maybe you wanna kinda open this up to the possibilities that I'm gonna do something very similar in the future. And that's the slippery slope developers get in when they try to implement something often generically to try to make it easier themselves in the future if, if they have to implement something similar. Here's an example, and I'll keep building off of it. Think about a system that's managing shipments. Think about you get something delivered to your house that you were ordered online. We have a feature that we want to implement is that when the package is actually delivered, we want to send a text message to the recipient, whoever placed the order, where it was being shipped to. So what we're doing is we are handling an event that we get notified when something's delivered. We're getting the contact information related to that shipment so that we can use Twilio in this example to actually send that text message out saying that the, sh the package your shipment was delivered. Was there anything wrong with that code? Well, before I get into it more, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So is there anything wrong with this code? Well, some of you are probably thinking, I really don't like this call to Twilio directly. I don't like depending on it directly here using that static method. What you might be thinking of doing is creating an interface. I call this one ISMS service because everything's called a service apparently. Then I am my implementation for Twilio, which is doing the exact same thing it was doing before essentially. And like I mentioned, now we're gonna inject that instead. And instead of calling Twilio directly, we're gonna kind of use our abstraction there. But why? You don't need it. You aren't gonna need it. And if you do, when that time comes, then you'll have a better idea of the abstraction that you actually need to create. When we initially defined this interface, we were doing it with the knowledge solely that we had of our only implementation, which was Twilio. If we define another implementation, we can see where we've gone wrong because we have to implement the from here, but the from isn't relevant at all when we're using SMS API. There's a sender, which is the name, but not the phone number like it is from Twilio. Twilio provides a means of testing. If you specify this number as the from, it will be successful. If you specify this number as the to, it will fail. But if your argument is you don't actually even want to call Twilio here, then my question to you is, what are you even trying to test? Related to abstractions, I think one of the pitfalls that people fall into is trying to make things generic. Generic so that they fit more than the use case that you have at hand. So that it hopefully will save you time in the future when you have another use case. If you have another use case. Yagni. As an example, an SMS and an email are the same thing, right? They're just two use cases that we can kind of group together to make something generic. Well, maybe what that looks like is that we have this notification service that defines a notification type, which will be an email or an SMS, the address, which will be a phone number or an email address. And we could just implement that and iterate over our recipients. And if the uh, notification type is SMS, we're using that service that we defined earlier, that other abstraction, more indirection. Otherwise we can just throw here because we haven't actually implemented this yet because we actually haven't needed it. But I went down the mo mode here of making things generic just in case. It's gross and you're not gonna need it. Similar to that abstraction I created based on a single implementation, the design is gonna favor that because of your knowledge. If you take two different use cases and try to mold them into one, the same similar thing will happen as well as an explosion of complexity. I absolutely understand developers wanting to write code in a way that allows them to change it in the future with not a lot of headaches. I get it, but there's a way of doing that with low cost. One of the ways, as an example, is with an event-driven architecture. Back to my original example of when a package is delivered, we want to set out an SMS. So I have that here. We're just using Twilio directly. If the time comes up where we need to implement sending out an email when the package is delivered, we can implement that completely independently of the SMS. So here's my implementation. We're sending out the email. We may decide, okay, well, we're done with SMS now, actually, entirely. We could just delete that. It has no effect on the email. That's one of the benefits of something like event-driven architecture. It allows you to extend your system without necessarily having to change it. It's about giving yourself options, 
building your design and your architecture around giving you options at low cost because things will evolve, things will change in the future and you wanna be able to adapt. And when it comes to Yagni, we're oftentimes thinking about the cost of development. If it's on the feature side of how long did it actually take to actually develop that feature that ultimately is never used. Or on the technical side, trying to make things more generic, which leads to nowhere good, or trying to add abstractions when we have no other implementations to make things easier. The other part of this is just purely the cost of ownership, adding that complexity, adding all that code that has zero value. There's a lot of cost to ownership to this to maintain it. I do think there is something to explore related to Yagni and when you have enough experience and the dangers a little bit of being able to anticipate what might happen in the future. I'd love to hear your comments on this because I'm assuming everybody has something related to this where you knew it was gonna happen and it did. Generally, I think Yagni is a good principle to follow, but as always, your context matters. In this video, if you're looking at the examples, is not a abstractions are bad video. That's not it at all. The point I'm trying to make is write code features that have value now, not something that might help you in the future. But that's not to say you shouldn't be using different design patterns or architectural styles that allow you to evolve your system over time. Now get in the comments and let me know your horror stories of Yagni and things you built that you just didn't need. And if you want to take a step further and want to chat with other software developers about topics like this and domain driven design, adventure in architecture, things like that. You can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.